Well, movies come and go and directors come and go, but happily, John Schlesinger has been with us a good long time. You're going strong, you've got your rhythm and momentum <laughs> still. Certainly one of the world's greatest directors, but I know you don't take that so seriously. You told me once that uh, you don't read your notices. Not you much. don't pay too much attention to those things. Not much. Yeah, have you worked out a philosophy about that sort of thing? Like, the less I know about what others say, the better? One only remembers the bad ones on the whole. And mm. why make oneself more paranoid than one always is, <laughs> than I already have? I was going to say, <coughs> there's enough paranoia in many of your movies to last yes. all of us a lifetime. Well, that's, that's personal. <laughs> is, it, is there a, a side to John Schlesinger that maybe can come out and play yes. in a movie like The Believers, for Absolutely. example? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take The Believers as a case in point, maybe. What yes. about it might represent this undercurrent of John Schlesinger? Well, I've all, I mean, first of all, I hope it's a, it's a very frightening thriller. I mean, and that's what I set out to make, and that's what I wanted to make. Um, I suppose, why does one want to make thrillers? Or I've made two now. Um, Although fantasy is an element that creeps up constantly in your movies. Yes. Whether it's yes, thrilling or not, it's, it's there. Yes, I don't know why. I, 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 it's very difficult for me to psychoanalyze myself as to why those things are there. Uh, I'm interested in in people that are pushed to to the edge or under in some sort of pressure cooker situation, um, which uh, must be personal to me. I think I'm I'm I was very interested in in be the believers in the kind of religious aspect and the rituals that surround the rather strange goings on in the uh, and frightening goings on in the in the religions that uh, Cal Jameson, played by Martin Sheen, comes across. Uh, and gets involved in eventually. I suppose that there are primeval fears that we all have and that I have that one wants in some way to exorcise. And the, the more modern this city, the smoother the surfaces around them, maybe the more vulnerable we are to those primeval. Yes, because, um, because I mean, I think one of the important things about the believers is it portrays kind of apparently ordinary life which we're all used to and underneath it are these very strange goings on which indeed are going on. But they're not always supernatural ones necessarily. A, a, a carton of milk and a deficient coffee maker can be a nightmare too. Yes, that's based on fact, not right. quite to the extreme that we portray it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but don't you think that kind of terror exists side absolutely. by side with the rituals? Oh absolutely, I mean of course it does. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, uh, that's why I think religion has such a strong pill over people and the rituals involved with it. And that's, you know, when, I don't know, there's something very strange about walking up a busy street in New York and then suddenly going into a church off it. I don't know why it should happen, it happens to me in cities where one suddenly goes into a total and very ancient kind of atmosphere right off a very modern one. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean to say there's anything sinister about it, there's something so terribly different about it that, that, that it's very marked and I sometimes do it. It's a juxtaposition. Yes, it's a, well, and juxtaposition love. of things that is, is mm -hmm. what I've often been interested in, in showing and using. Now you said people going to a limit, but it's also been said of you, and I think you've said it, that I like to show in my films how people learn to accept compromises, too. Mm -hmm. When they find out they can't get what they really want, mm -hmm. to pull back and accept what they can get. Maybe that's a different side of John Schlesinger, too. Mm, yes, I, I think that is. I think it is. I don't think it's in this film, no. because this goes to much Indeed. greater extremes than that. Some of my favorite pictures of yours are the ones that you did while still in, in, in England. Billy Lyre is still, to me, one of the great films I've ever seen about a dreamer. Yes. And here's a man who can't quite resist the fascination of a dream. Now, is yes. that John Schlesinger, too? Yes. Yes, it is. still is. And, I mean, I, I haven't left England. I still live there. And I'm going back to make another film there. And I occasionally... I always feel I have to go back there to, to do something in between my, my, mm -hmm. my trips to America. Now, it was an image of Bathsheba out on the lawn of the English countryside in Madding Crowd that drew you to that project. Now, what does well, that tell us about also, Well, it could also have been sheep falling over the edge of a cliff, kind of driven by some strange impulse. I mean, there are some very macabre things in that, in Indeed. Far From the Madding Crowd. I mean, blows of fate that are meted out by God knows what, by 
by providence to people that have to pick themselves up and carry on if they are to carry on, or who take their own lives if they decided they can't, you know, can't carry mm -hmm. on. I mean, there are strange extremes to which we are driven and which has been suggested, I think, certainly in, in, it's in Hardy. Or the terrors of the social groups as in loving. Kind of loving? That's just, uh, excuse me, a darling. Oh, darling. Um, there's a case where Ju the world Julie Christie moves in is just as hazardous as anything we see in the believers, I think. Yes. Terrors on all hands, John Schlesinger. Is, are you saying that the world somehow is full of nightmare everywhere you look? Well, it's full of joy, um, um, counterpointed with nightmare. I mean, I'm not an unhappy person. I don't think. Um, but you have a genial, beaming kind of... Yes, <laughs> I think it, underneath it lurks all sorts of strange things. But, I mean, I, I do find the juxtaposition of the two sides of one's life or the two sides of anybody's life is, is very interesting because I think we all are two people. We all have dark sides and a lighter side. And that's very interesting to investigate because I feel it quite strongly in myself. Some final observations, if I might, on the so-called kitchen sink style. Realism in film, is it a touchstone that all dreamers have to return to occasionally, as did the Great Britain filmmakers in the 60s, late 50s? Well, I don't know that I would call, I mean, kitchen sink seemed to, d seemed to mean one kind of family, one kind of class of person, usually from some kind of urban working area. Um, and I don't really like that. I think that word now we can disuse. I don't think that I've ever been disinterested in portraying something which has an element of truth and realism about it. That's, I've kept, I think, true to all my life in some way or other. It may be heightened by fantasy. Billy Lyre had his fantasies, but there was a real person in a real situation with a real family. Cal Jameson in The Believers goes through some extraordinary exp and terrifying experiences, but there is still a family rooted at the center of it all, or a man and his son, and a new mother, so to speak. So that the family unit has remained quite constant in most of the, most of the films in dealing with human emotions that I think I've dealt with. John Schlesinger, thank you for the dreams, thank even you. if some of them have been nightmares. Thank you. <laughs> We're in Toronto, and I'm John Tibbetts for KCTV 5.